Good afternoon, Chris Sims, Chief Community Architect with First Integrity Mortgage. And I have a distinct pleasure today of interviewing not only a good friend, but somebody I've admired in our industry for quite some time, Joel Farrell. Joel, it's a pleasure to have you here, buddy. Uh, I definitely appreciate it. But excited to spend this time with you, not only uh, for us to team back up like we are, mm -hmm. but at the same time, too, the opportunity to truly just sit and have to have a conversation, get to hear your story a little bit more and talk about it. I know it, but want the rest of the world to know it, too. So. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I turned 40 this year. Oh, yeah. And well, man, you age better than the rest of us. Last year, last year. And, you know, we met in 2013. 13, yeah. And yeah. just so much has happened in my mortgage career, which started in 2006. It feels like a lifetime ago. Right. It feels like an entire career. <laughs> and like, I've accomplished a lot and um, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And yeah. family members, you know, the hard work, the late hours, the phone calls on the weekend. But like I was putting things out, putting this out there on my own platforms, like I'm literally just hitting my prime. Yeah, completely, really. So it's but yeah. you think about the cycles you've been through and the cycles. I mean, the industry has been through and what you've accomplished inside of it. It's it's a lot, man. You've been, been through a lot. So, but you've you've definitely put in the hard work at an early age. So yeah, yeah. The good part is is you got all that knowledge and background ready to kickstart this new phase. So it's yep. it's pretty awesome. It's exciting. Yep. So with that, one of the things you're doing right now is your Strive for 25 podcast, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. So the 25, yeah. it's not about age. It's not about you know numbers. It's about saving 25% of your income. And it, it really is just an arbitrary goal. But you talk about trying to invest, whether it be yep. stocks or bonds or real estate or whatever it is, you've got to save money. Yeah. And in this current environment with the cost of living going up so much inflation, you know, saving is you know, not really about cutting and budgeting your stock, right. your, your Starbucks or all, all the other BS. It's the people that I'm seeing get ahead, especially going down this path of interviewing entrepreneurs and business owners and people that are doing things creatively. People are getting out of the ones that are increasing income, focusing yeah. on side hustles or a business and getting coaching to be able to, to build skills, to generate more income. And so increase income, save 25% and then have options to invest. So that's what the, the messaging is all about. Yeah. Uh, but over a hundred episodes in on the podcast, I uh, started posting on July 12th of 2022. And wow, so you've got over 100 already. So, yeah. So the, the Instagram channel I started on July 12th um, in 2022 and decided I was going to start posting every single day. I didn't know what I was doing. I was right. like, just at that moment in my life, I'm like, okay, I'm going all in. I'm going to just do this. I didn't know what I was doing. The podcast started in September. Uh, so I started posting two episodes a week for probably four months. And then kind of that, okay, I, you know, time is is short here. I need to catch up. Yeah. So I've kept on going, and so over I think I'm 112 episodes uh, at this point, and the process, right? I mean, the followers and the downloads or all that stuff, you know, comes into play. All, all the vanity metrics, and it's a top 10 percent podcast based on certain That's, metrics. Wow, which is cool. Yeah. But like, if you get to 100 episodes and you're not at top 10 percent, like <laughs> you're not doing something right because most people stop. And right. that's kind of the metrics right. you hear about there. Most people, they get to two or five or 10 and they stop. And, yeah. you know, one of the things I would tell anybody about podcasting or content creation is that the results, you know, will become something that's important, right? Right, right. And the process matters and the body of work also matters. And stacking up that body of work, it's all about opening up certain doors. And, you know, I was in Maryland in... um uh, at the end of February, doing a, a presentation, a, a quote unquote keynote yeah. about personal branding, which what the hell do I know about personal branding? I've been a mortgage for 20 years, uh, but been building the brand. this 18 month journey, right. that body of work stacked up and stacked up and then connections and connections and connections that kind of goes back to an event about side hustles that we, that I did in Florida in March of 23 and those connections. And that led to that. And so it's like, just don't know where things are going to open yeah. uh, or head. So opening doors is a really important part of the, of the journey as well. So you talk about that a little bit in the podcast too, right? And in the book about trying to get to that 25, right? Striving to save for that 25% of your income. And sometimes it takes just a little bit every day, right? And, and, and I think you and I talked about that a little bit too, when you were starting the podcast, mm -hmm. you just had to do a little bit every day. Right? And that's been kind of one of the mantras that you've used in this and being able to accomplish the goals, right? A hundred percent. And, you know, I look back on, you know, in my earlier age yeah. uh, journey, it's like, 
saving money, you know, it's like, okay, I want to go to the bar, I want to go hang out with friends, I want to go, you know, maybe meet the opposite sex or whoever you're looking for. And, you know, when you're younger, you know, saving a hundred bucks a month seems like a trivial number that doesn't matter. Yeah. But when you do it every single month, that, that, that process that changes who you are, those habits that they matter and you can build from there. Um, but yeah, like for me personally, you know, I've got that ADHD yeah. brain in mind, right? So like I had to figure out ways to uh, make things sticky for me to be able to, okay, this is my goal. What do I got to do? How am I going to get myself to do this extra thing that I need to do yep. to be able to get to my goal? And so for me, um, that summer of 2022, I was reading Atomic Habits and in the book, he talks about the two minute rule. Yeah. And like, if you want to build a habit, you're going to have to do it for a period of time over and over, 30 days, 60 days, 25 days, whatever the number is for you. So I was working on the platforms at night when the kids were down and, you know, laying on the ground because the kids, they're, they're at the time they were two and a half, two boys are two and a half. You know, they want daddy laying on the ground as they yeah. fall asleep. And so, you know, when your day is winding down and you're on the floor at nine o'clock and you're thinking <laughs> to yourself, I have to get back up and get the energy to, to concentrate. Like yeah. that was very stressful and, and the anxiety of like, oh my God, am I going to be able to do this? And then days you do it and then days you don't. And I talk about hitting the, I'll do it tomorrow button. Yeah. And, you know, I use the two minute rule. Like, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to just put on a timer for two minutes. I'm going to do like one or two things and I'm going to stop. And that was the most foreign thing that I ever did. And I did that for a couple of days and okay, if I'm, if I'm here, I might as well do a few more things. And so maybe a half hour, an hour or whatever. And I got to 14 days of, of consecutively, you know, logging yeah. in and working for a minimum of two minutes. And then I was retraining my brain to learn to love the process. And so I was looking forward to doing the work. That's awesome. So those are the little things that yeah. the process, it changes, you know, how, how your, your under your subconscious uh, is wired. How did you pick your two things that you were going to spend <laughs> two minutes on? Uh, first thing is turn, on, turn the on <laughs> button on, wait for three minutes for the damn thing to, to turn on. Um, but at that point, like, it's just, just doing something, right. doing something that's going to yeah. fit towards your goal. Maybe it's planning, maybe it's one post, maybe it's, you know, an idea, writing it down, whatever it is. You've been an avid real estate investor mm -hmm. with the experience you've had. What have been the two things that in your opinion, you've got to be careful of when you get into investing real estate? There's so much that goes into investing and there's different strategies. And there's, if there's one thing that I would do over, yeah, it's because the, the book talks about, the stair step method, which is a way for the everyday person to be able to scale in to real estate. And the basics are you buy a primary residence, especially if, let's just say you're 25, you buy a property here in St. Louis for 200,000 or whatever right. the number is, live there for a couple of years, you save up, you buy the next one, a little bit of a higher price yep. as a primary, turn the old one to a rental. So if you can do that a couple of times over eight to 10 years, you're going to be stacking and, and, you know, building a multi-million dollar portfolio. So that that's one of the blueprints of, of one strategy. Now, the advice that I would give to anybody is that I've seen people overanalyze the data, yeah. spend hours and hours and weeks and months of analyzing, looking at properties and all that stuff and, and not doing anything, not buying right. something. What if that 10 hours a week, 40 hours a month or whatever the number is that they were spending on analyzing deals and, and thinking about this stuff, yeah. they were spending that on something completely different that was going to have a different return on your time. And, th and that kind of goes, goes back into the strive for 25 increasing income. What if they were increasing income? What if they were building skills to increase income? Maybe it's a side business. Maybe if you're in sales, it's okay. How do I get better at sales? Yeah. Or whatever the, whatever the thing may be. If you can spend more time on increasing income, you have more money to save, yep. more margin for error. And I use the word trajectory. When your trajectory is up in an, in an incline, you know, versus someone who yeah. is flatlined, if you're building skills, you're building income, you have more margin for error than if it's somebody who's flatlining or declining, you have no margin for error. So you right. have to be perfect with your analysis and the deal. And so if I could do things over, I would be doing, spending more time with people about increasing income and, and finding, and finding the people that I can learn from. And then, you know, talking about a mentor, I never had a mentor yeah. for real estate, but if I could do it over finding a mentor that I believe I, uh, is an example where I want to be and just not stopping until I find that person. I agree with you on that. Personal experience aside, that having a mentor in the real estate side would, would have been critical in my own scenarios. Completely agree. You've been in mortgage since 2006. Why mortgage? 
I mean, it's literally just complete circumstance. Like roll yeah. the dice. I was working at the melting pot, serving tables, interviewing for jobs. And this is, I, I graduated from college in 05. And, you know, there was a, her name is Kim Dotson. Kim Dotson uh, was a regular that came and she requested me to be at my table with her kids. They would come in for report cards. And after about a year, she's like, Joel, I'm going to get you a job. I'm like, what? <laughs> I work at Citibank. And I'm going to get you a job. I'm going to get you an interview. Show up at this time, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what's the job? Oh, it's, it's about more. It's mortgage. We yeah. lend money to people to buy houses. Okay, cool. Yeah. I showed up and somehow, some way I got the job. Yeah. Um, and I was working in a department that was servicing financial advisors and their clients and some high net worth clients. And which is, you know, you know, I'm very thankful of that yeah. because looking yeah. back on, I am 23 talking to people that are million dollar net worth and I don't know what the hell I was doing, <laughs> but you learn quickly and, and whatnot. And, and that job just, you know, it was it paid the bills. I learned yeah. a lot. But over time, seeing what people were doing and not doing and, you know, people that are doing things well and not well and everything in between, you right. learn so much about finance and habits and what people are doing and not doing. And it just by osmosis, you're like, okay, I want to, I want to go there. And so. So when you, if you were to sit with somebody new today and they're deciding to get into the mortgage industry, what's the best piece of advice you can give them? Man, run far away. <laughs> <clears throat> I know I, I think you know the buffalo what, what's the saying with the the buffalo um uh you know heads heads into the storm yeah um forgive me on the on the butchering of the, of the saying but you know when you go against the grain like that yeah like this job is so challenging yeah in terms of you have to go go get business you got to manage 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 the process with the clients all the things you got you got to do to be able to, to do a loan and the amount of transactions that are out there, we're at all time low. So people are getting out of the industry right. by, you know, tenfold. So if if you can figure out some way to be able to survive in this industry right now, yeah. you know, if you're in your in your earlier years, well, one, there's not many people that are in the ranks that are gonna be, you know, putting their time in now to be, you know, you True. fast for the clock 10 years, who else is gonna be in the industry? That's right. Um, so you're gonna have a leg up on all the people that are, you know, down the road. But it's a it's a opportunity to be able to learn so much about personal finance and investing and real estate and networking and running a business that I mean the experience is priceless. Yeah, the job can be stressful, but if you can get past all that stuff, there's a lot of opportunity. Yeah, I, I truly agree with you. The amount of uh, stress that we go through trying to <laughs> find the new business, like you said, manage the the transaction itself plus the. The, the all the relationships involved, right? Realtors, title companies, appraisers, everything that'll affect the consumer's ability to purchase this property. And then you get to the the end of it and you gotta start over again. You gotta go find a yeah. new deal, right? Yep. So you're you're constantly hunting, mm -hmm. but you're also trying to to foster that at the same time. So Th there's one more thing I wanna add on to that too, is and you know, there's different professions that are in finance. You've got financial advisors, you've yeah. got insurance people, you've got um, 401k companies, yep. like there's a million different things that are in that, in, in this industry, real estate agents and, and whatnot. And I think the mortgage person has a unique, um, um, perspective of, of people's lives. Yeah. There's no one in the, in, in any in other industry that looks at someone's personal situation, their credit scores, their debt, their income, their, all the things here. Yeah. And has an opportunity to be able to help guide, advise, maybe even motivate, inspire right. to do more than that person that's in our industry. And I feel like on the flip side of that, people don't really give, I don't think we give ourselves enough credit of how good we are. Yeah. Um, that, oh, we just do, we're just mortgage, we're just mortgage people. Yep. And we're dying by dozen and we're, you know, calling all the realtors for business and blah, 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 blah. And I think there's some negative connotations for mortgage. And I think on the flip side of that, we're amazing. The good ones are amazing what they do. They help people yeah. get into people into homes. And I think there's an opportunity there for the long term for the people that really want to uh, add value to their clients and, and provide extra guidance to be able to stand above the rest and, and uh, make a, a massive impact. Well, Joel, it's it's been an absolute pleasure sitting here with you today and having the chance to converse and go back and forth. Uh, if you don't have it, check it out. Like you said, it's on Amazon for three dollars. <laughs> it's not like you're going to go broke buying the book and you just might become a millionaire. <laughs> Check it out. See what happens. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it.